Raja Selva Kumar is a senior at Milton High School and a Davidson Fellow and a BioGenius uh, Challenge finalist. In this project, the implementation of gastromicrobial fuel cell in capsular nanorobotics, uh, Raja developed the gastromicrobial fuel cell, GMFC. Uh, based on a microbial fuel cell, the GMFC generates electricity using uh, gastrobacteria to be used to power capsular uh, nanobots. His passion is to innovate and bring about a new era of ideas. Raja? Ever since my childhood, I always had a peculiar passion for science fiction movies. Star Wars, for example, has been an integral part of many of my Halloween costumes. As I grew older, however, I wondered, why? Why am I so passionate about these science fiction ideas where you can have a reality that's completely unattainable? Then I realized it's not about the fiction, but it's about the world you create. It's about the possibilities you imagine. What you dream can become reality, and it's up to you to say what is and what isn't. So as I went into kindergarten, I, uh, I started to think about what I wanted to do. And I realized I wanted to become an astronaut and an inventor at the same time. Uh, so, when I went into, so after I went into kindergarten, I, uh, I underwent my first science fair. And in my first science fair project, I created a floating banner. And in that float, after seeing that floating banner, I said, whoa, this is completely revolutionary. This type of things I only see in Harry Potter. So after doing that, I was completely blown away. My mind was open to completely new possibilities. And I wanted to continue going on throughout my elementary school and my middle school years to f further this scientific research and progress. I was still searching for something, though. Elementary school transpired. Sixth grade came along. Sixth grade, I, I took carbon dioxide emissions, measured them from different cars, and saw how they compared against each other. The next year, I went on to do more of a statistical analysis. I wanted to see what are the, when, when will global warming really hit the peak. I analyzed methane curves and predicted which, which year we will reach that climax. But the next year, eighth grade, was a true change for me because I was able to go to the international level. With my project, I was able to see many other people with the like-minded like thinking that I had, the same type of ideas, inspiration, innovation. And I was, comp I was just as passionate as they were. And I was inspired by them, too. I wanted to continue my journey because there are other people like me who had different ideas and were able to think differently. Um, so in ninth grade, um, I went into my school, and they didn't have a science fair program. And I said, this is completely different. I want to be able to create a science fair program. I want to keep on going with what I like to do. And I don't, want to, I don't want to have anybody to tell me otherwise. So I went on, and I was first introduced to the concept of a microbial fuel cell, where I can take electricity from bacteria. And that completely blew my mind for a second. I went on and researched a little bit more, and I saw that they only use this for wastewater treatment. And I said, there's more that you can do. do. There's more that you can implement this in. And I proposed a solution where you can have a yeast-based microbial fuel cell that can be used as a potential source in biomedical devices. And I said, this yeast-based fuel cell can be used inside of your body so as to be a, a, an alternative energy source for deep brain stimulation, a concept in which electrical pulses are sent to the brain and stimulate the brain to prevent diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and many, many more. That was, that was another building block for me, a big step up, because that was, a, that was a complete change in what my thinking was. Previously, I thought about big global problems like global warming and climate change, and I wanted to address them as a whole. But now I was able to localize it and address small problems in my own way and still impact many, many lives. I went on to the international competition, and again, I met more people, had new ideas, but I realized at that point, science fair is more than just the research. It's also about the connections you make. Throughout the process, I was able to contact many professors throughout the country in regards to my research, in regards to what type of ideas they had, share my passion, 
And when I went to the international level, I was able to talk with many people who had similar passions with myself. And more importantly, those connections last. Nowadays, those are the people I like to talk to. So when realizing that, I went into 10th grade completely charged because I still had to find that thing I was searching for. What was I searching for? I still didn't know. In 10th grade, I found the answer. I had read a Scientific American article the, the day before coming back to school. And when I had read it, it talked about capsular nanobots, an idea where you can have robots the size of a gummy bear swallowed inside the body, and they can form together to, for, to form surgical procedures from the inside of the body outwards. What that means is like a miniature doctor from the inside of your body. And that mean, that, that's a whole new way to treat mo many diseases we have nowadays, such as gastrointestinal cancer, also Crohn's disease, Menetrier's disease. The list goes on and on and on. And here's a potential way to do it. But the problem is the energy source. The lithium ion batteries that they use in these nanobots are, un are preventing them from being implemented in society. So I said, OK. I have a passion for robots as well. I can combine that with my passion for energy and let me come up with a new solution. So I said, let's take electricity from stomach bacteria. A completely new idea that had been unprecedented in the world. And, and I, using that microbial fuel cell technology that I had in the previous year, I was able to implement that inside of combining it with the capsular nanobots. And that, and that would have a potentially uh, sustainable, sustainable relationship. So here's a picture of me working in the lab. That is my fuel cell right there. Just wanted to um, show you that real quick. So um, as, I, as I carried that on, people had told me along the way, you can't do this. There's no such thing as taking electricity from stomach bacteria. You're just a kid. What do you know? But I never gave up. Because I knew this is the type of things I like to do. This was my passion. This is where I felt happiest. And, and even after getting successful results and going on to further and further competitions, at the end of the day, all that mattered was I was happy with what I did. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. Friends, I'm here today to tell you, find your passion. Find what makes you happy and do it. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise just because you're a kid, you're young or it's not possible. There's no such thing as impossible. There's a favorite quote of mine from the movie Pursuit of Happiness, where Will Smith turns around and tells his son, hey, don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. Not even me. If you have a dream, go for it. Friends, you are here today because you also have a passion that you, are here, that you have to find out if you haven't figured it out already. Find it out. Enjoy it. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise, not even me.